as we got into the process, we're like, wow. It was just a matter of securing the land. That was really difficult. Monetizing your passion. Something that we love, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Booked up so quick. Our heads were spinning. We were mm -hmm. like, we literally just put this online. I think in, in four days, October was full. full. Yep. Long after November was full. And we right. were like, oh my God, you know. Hey. You've watched a ton of YouTube videos on glamping, yurts, tiny homes, tents, domes, everything like that, because you're serious about starting a tiny home business or a glamping business. The only problem is you don't know anybody who's ever done something like this before. So you don't even know where to start or how to be successful. Well, in today's video, I have the owners of Camp Hervé. They built an amazing, one of the best off-grid cabins I have ever seen. Shortly after that, they put it on Airbnb to see what would happen. Well, it was an instant hit. It brought their guests closer to nature and it also was an extremely profitable business for them. But here's the thing, I wanna learn how to do that for myself. Well, the owners of Camp Hervé generously sat down with me to give us all of their tips on how to build a cabin, how to buy land, how to set up solar power, how to build an off-grid bathroom, how to market on Airbnb, everything. They really spilled the beans. I honestly think this is one of the best conversations ever had on glamping, and I'm happy that I recorded it and I can give it to you guys. One last thing, I get a ton of comments under my YouTube videos asking me to make more content like this. You guys want hardcore conversations with industry experts giving you real advice that you can actually use. And I wanna keep making these types of videos. The problem is, is they don't do very well on the YouTube algorithm. So if you guys could help me out, like this video like crazy, hit the like button, leave a ton of comments, and really help me get my message out there. Let's make this my YouTube video with the most likes and the most comments I've ever got. This is the Keep It Tiny podcast. Let's get into it. So let's take a step back before we get into the cabin and the build. Mm -hmm. um, I personally believe that maybe the most important, and if not the second most important thing about running a successful glamping, off-grid, short-term rental cabin business is the land that it sits on. It almost can make it break you. Um, and I'd love to kind of learn more about this land that we're on mm -hmm. and most importantly, why you guys chose it. And it almost feels like you guys felt like you, you had to have it. So how did you push everyone out of the way? And, and, and how did you get in here? And, you know, talk to me about uh, the land that we have here uh, and also like, you know, uh, different ideas for it and, you know, just kind of how all that came together. Um, <laughs> well, first talk about what surrounds us. I mean, the mm. appeal yeah, well, of, of this area, I guess. Right. So we're, we're a five acre lot that's nestled amongst 11,000 acres of state owned wildlife management land. Mm -hmm. So it's all public accessed with, and there's some trail networks. The Finger Lakes trail runs right out of our Western boundary. Um, Yes, people can start taking a hike right right over there. Right from Literally, the property. Yeah, <laughs> just feet away. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, what ultimately drew us, though, to this property wasn't even all of that. I mean, we knew that those were perks. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that I, I knew, I've known of this property most of my childhood through adult life. Like, mm -hmm. I, I grew up coming up here uh, in high school with friends. That their family owned it. Um. Campfires and, and yeah, bonfires for yeah. holidays, Halloween trips. We'd trek up here in a in a hay wagon, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it, we had a lot of fun up here as a kid. So um, a little bit of nostalgia, I guess, mm -hmm. and then I think um, I think when we did come to look at it, though, the way um, the way that it's been cleared it's just sort of sort sort of seemed like perfect, like wow, that would be a great spot for a cabin. And this mm -hmm. would be a great spot for this. And I, I, I remember clearly kind of looking and being like, wow. Yeah, that we saw there was a lot of potential mm -hmm. for the development of it as like a, you know, a campsite, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like, And I say campsite, not in the necessarily the traditional sense, but in a place that you would, you know, because we used to call it a camp, like that was their, they had an old cabin up here. And, uh, you know, we just saw that there was, there was a lot of potential to create it in the way that we envisioned creating something. Um, and then all of the other things were just kind of like this bonus or perk that went along with it, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of all the public access of, of trails and, and 
outdoor recreation that seems to have really picked up in this area in the last you know decade or two. Um, and, and you were aware of those things increasing and the demand increasing because you're somewhat familiar with the area. And I, I, I say that because they say when you start investing, you should invest in things that you know. Invest, if you're going on the stock market, invest in stocks and companies that you're familiar with. And it seems as though you know that kind of pl- came to play here and assisted you with everything. 100%. I think that's, that is what made this um, feel safer. Mm-hmm. Is because we I had the familiarity with it not not so much she did but she trusted me she's like okay, yeah <laughs> if you think so but it, having that familiarity and knowing what the region in general uh, had going for it felt like it was a fairly safe bet mm-hmm. but also falling back on the concept that we you know because we did build this ultimately for ourselves in a way that we knew we would enjoy was that if our idea failed. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario was we had this great little place to come and right. get away. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's best case scenario? Best case scenario is is people love it, and, <laughs> and you know, and it does what we kind of thought it would do, and then we can you know we continue to expand it um, to the full build out that we we envision, right. uh, okay. which is still kind of like I said, it's it's a little bit of a um, evolving idea, mm-hmm. but because we are new. I mean, we're, right. Yeah. I mean, we we're not we, even a full year in right. with this being open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but we have ideas and we have things in place and, and on the boards to expand uh, because the, the, so far it has kind of lived up to the expectations of what we thought it could do. You know, and something too, um, we do a lot of hiking. And so hiking around here, we would run into people from all over the world Mm -hmm. so we're on the trails and you know we met some people from england we are um on the trails and we're meeting people from who are traveling here specifically Mm -hmm. from all over the country yeah to come for the hiking to come for the nature to come for the waterfalls so i think um i don't think we maybe necessarily knew that at the time you know when we were thinking about starting this but as we got into the process, we're like, wow, all you know, we all, yeah, yeah. And we're really kind of sitting in this great space um, mm-hmm. where people are coming for the Finger Lakes or for the waterfalls and, you know, yeah, and there's a lot of t- tourism happening here too. It, yeah. I was going to say this region in general is really starting to pick up. I mean, it's always been kind of a tourist destination because of the Finger Lakes and the wine region. Um But it's even so much more than that now. And especially in the last five to 10 years, it's mm-hmm. like, there's so many more things to draw people here um and what was kind of interesting and almost a uh i don't know if a happy accident the, it took us so long to buy this property there was a lot of things mm-hmm. that that were just in the way unfortunately um but what that did is it gave us time to actually see the way this area was getting used and people were actually coming and like she said you know meeting these elderly folks from like England were like, how did you find this? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we found them out on the trail one day and it was just so bizarre, but it was interesting to see like, this place is really attracting people from everywhere. Like, and that's just one example. I mean, we, we've encountered every time we encounter someone like, Hey, where are you coming from? Out of state somewhere. You know, they're, they're here to visit, to see the nature experience, the wildlife and what, and, and what this space has to offer. And I think that helped prove to us that what we were going to do was somewhat safer than we even thought initially, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was reassuring to, I think, give us the whole like full steam ahead mindset, mm-hmm. you know? So, and for this area, uh, did you do the Airbnb hack, which is, uh, you know, like doing some research? Uh, could you talk to us about that idea and just kind of map that out for people who are unfamiliar with that as you're like about to take the plunge? we did well we did airbnb research we looked what was around Mm -hmm. um it was really um are you being polite to the other no 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 (laughs) well no what it was is i don't think we saw like we're like there isn't really anything there was a couple there Mm -hmm. was a couple like two places but not enough to serve the market that you perceived no and everything was way way cheap Mm -hmm. or like and we were like wait a minute what like 
are people even renting these things? Mm -hmm. Like that was what a lot of it was. And then we were, there was a, there's a couple of good ones. Like there's a nice cottage, um, somewhat nearby that does pretty well, we think. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like another, a yurt that does pretty well. Um, but beyond that, there was not, not specifically in this area. I mean, Ithaca region in, in, in its larger context or Tompkins County in its larger context, Yes, there are some nicer ones out there. So we did that research just to see, but we also knew there was nothing that was fulfilling the off grid market Mm -hmm. at all. Oh, at all. Right. So, and we knew that's actually, and that was one thing I'll say too, is we knew we were going into this off grid right from the start. This was not something that like became just through, like we just, we started that way. We did not want to worry about bringing in electrical and all this other stuff. We wanted the experience to be a disconnect from all of the things that we're tethered to in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. We wanted people to be able to pull away from that. Go immerse yourself in nature, like listen to the birds, like put your phone down. Netflix is not here. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Because I think that's what we needed. Mm -hmm. Like I needed that for myself Mm -hmm. as much as Jen did. Mm -hmm. And we, so we created that for ourselves and it was like, if people, we know other people need this too. Yeah. And And your listing is unapologetic about that, that that those amenities, you know, you're not going to find those here because that's not what this is. That's not what this is. And that's not what this is for. Right. And I think, there's enough people who are actually looking for that. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I had a woman actually, interestingly enough, just email me yesterday about coming up to stay and with short notice. And I said, Oh, you know, unfortunately those dates are booked. And she's like, my one caveat is I need Wi-Fi." I said, we do, we do not have it. We sorry. don't offer it. We don't have it. And it's yeah. by design. Like our, mm-hmm. our intent is for you to come here and leave that where you mm-hmm. can leave it, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. And we don't really have plans to cater to that we don't there's other places that you can do that with and that is that's fine like Mm -hmm. if that and if that's what you need go please like go do that we can offer or find you way you know what i mean but for us it was like no we want you to come here and like slow it down yeah Yeah. take the time to build a fire to cook your food on don't just you know even though we offer a stove Mm -hmm. but our our hope is that we like go build a fire outside Mm -hmm. and then get your pans and get your you know cut your stuff and go cook it on a fire outside like just be more intentional about everything so coffee you know it's it's a slower process to make your coffee and the heat you know um all of that is by design okay to encourage people to have you know step back away from the technological filled lifestyles that we all have now i mean we're we're just we're bombarded with that stuff yeah um and it's nice to not have i mean i i really get cell service up here Mm-hmm. And I love it. Yeah. I love just like you can just literally sit in peace and not feel like you have to check this thing like yeah. all the time or you're getting alerts because it's like you're not getting that signal. And it's it's nice. It's definitely a, a retreat or a little bit of a respite, I think, from your day to day. Yeah. 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 So. So can you guys, uh, switch gears a bit, like, Mm -hmm. let's get back to what we're in right now. Can you tell me, you know, the specs of, of the cabin that we're in? Uh, and can you tell me the amenities that the cabin has? That's all you. On me? Architect. Uh, (laughs) so the, the cabin is a, basically it's a 12 by 16 footprint. Um, it's set up on piers to give it a little bit of elevated, you know, floor plan. So even when you're just in the ground floor, you're like, you're kind of up in the air. Um, it, we have a wood burning stove for the winter months, colder months, um, for your heat. That's your main heat source. We offer, um, a two burner cooktop stove, a sink that is provided with um, water through a, um, a tank and a 12 volt pump that's charged through a solar panel Mm -hmm. for that. We offer, we have uh, goal zeros, um, on site with solar panels for basic electrical needs. So we have some led lighting in house that, um, can is used, you know, as your primary light source for, you know, cooking and so forth over the kitchenette area. Um, we have, uh, battery powered rechargeable lighting for like kind of ambiance bedside lighting. Uh, what else? What do we have? Um, composting toilet inside Mm -hmm. with an outdoor shower. Um, and that was all also by design. We didn't want to have to deal with major plumbing Mm -hmm. so we've kind of kept it limited in in here to just the sink which we can winterize uh in the colder months we we drain the system uh which so that kind of that 
luxury goes away in the winter months, but it doesn't seem to deter anybody. They, 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 it doesn't bother them at all. Mm -hmm. Um, what else do we have going on here? We offer hammocks. Well, yeah, we have um, a comfortable bed. I mean, the, oh, the bedding, the yeah, tough to needle nice. mattress. Um, I think you should talk about the windows a little bit, though. Okay, that's a good point. Okay. So, yeah, the window. So, okay, let me. Everything that we built this cabin, we tried to do local for okay. as much as we could. Um, so the ash, which is on the floor, the lumber, mm -hmm. um, the kitchenette which is built with that all was felled on site about a year and a half ago. We milled it up local with a local guy who has a sawmill. He came up with it and we cut it up in basically a day, um, stacked it and dried it, took this down to, you know, so had the floors turned into tongue and groove flooring. Um, we finished that stuff. The doors are from a reclaim reclaim from a building locally, um, that we bought. Uh, the windows were donated to us by a, a neighbor who she, has a soft spot for history. Mm -hmm. She actually saved, um, I, I forget how many windows it was, but it, uh, tons of them from this old 1850s Italian eight house and gifted two of them to us, to which we rebuilt. Wow. Uh, and had to put new, uh, you know, built new frames for them. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of changed their, their double hungs, but I turned them into more of an, an awning style, uh, just cause there was a little safer operation. They still contain their original rolled glass mm -hmm. panes, which are really hard to find and expensive to replace if you need to do it. So we're really hoping that they never break. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but that's a huge feature. People love it. I mean, it brings in a lot of natural light and it gives you kind of like a bedside view out to, you know, out to nature, mm -hmm. um, which is a really nice thing. Um, so what amenities though, uh, cause, cause taking a step back, you, you started off with the amenities that, you know, like the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there, you need somewhere to, to, you know, go to the bathroom, uh, solar, et cetera. What amenities have you chosen not to offer? Or, you know, as you were choosing your, the amenity setup, you know, why did you make the decisions that you made? Um, you know, looking at your, even down to your composting toilet, um, you know, and, and the decisions that are made there. Can you talk to me kind of your mindset as you were going through some of those decisions? Um, man, simplicity mm -hmm. was, was definitely one, you know, something that we knew, um, was going to be easy to deal with and, and, a, and a, to some extent, low cost, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't, we knew we didn't want to get involved with having to like dealing with drilling a well, putting in a septic, bringing in water. And then all of a sudden you, that, that adds a whole nother layer because now you, you have to heat that thing year round. And, you know, so it was really about sustainability and simplicity, mm -hmm. I think is what was our, a big driving force for right. us. Um, when we started out on this, it, even from the beginning, we knew mm -hmm. that was going to be, um, a, a major goal. And we wanted people to experience that too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it might not be the most comfortable, um, experience when you're used to, you know, flush toilets and hot showers on demand and all mm -hmm. that all the time. But we wanted that to, you know, like come and, you know, you, you might enjoy it, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, yes, it's a little different, but I promise you, like once you use it a couple of times, you're like, Oh, this isn't all that much different. You know, I feel as though that that's one of the things that are holding back a lot of entrepreneurs from getting into the space. They think, um, no one would ever use a composting toilet. No yeah. one would ever use an outdoor shower. Why would somebody want that? Yeah. Uh, we I, I said that at times, right, you right. know? <laughs> yeah. She was, we weren't, yeah. There was times where we weren't sure about the approach. Right. Um, but the compost toilet has not been a problem. We give kind of, I'll say comedic or lighthearted instructions about how to use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and it hasn't been a problem. I mean, people, nobody said, Oh, I'll never use it again or, you know, anything like that. And so actually we've, I feel like for the, the guests that we have had so far, many of them have made mention or have actually returned already. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. So the people who have, you know, who are seeking out this experience, um, really enjoy it and seem to want to come back, but like in a different season or something, you know, they want to, yeah, they, they want to experience it at a different right. time of the year. That's yeah. yeah. That's definitely been said on numerous occasions. Um, and so, you know, ultimately the, when, what we've settled on in terms of the amenities with the compost toilet that we went with, um, for, for, to hone in on that one was really cost simplicity of use 
knowing ab- like the short term rental concept, right? Mm-hmm. So there's definitely things out there. There's a, and this is the one thing that the market exists um, for anything that you're thinking about. Like you can probably find something that will fit your condition, mm-hmm. um, whether in budget for that matter, you know, so you can spend a whole lot more. I mean, we've looked at it, you know, $2,500 composting toilet versus a $500 versus Mm -hmm. a $3 bucket from Home Depot. Yep. Right. And Um, it has been a big conversation, right? We have talked about this. It's ongoing. I mean, we still do talk about it. Um, and so the, the, the reality is, is it, it, there, there exists an opportunity for anybody to, solve a problem in any price point that they have ahead of them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, so yeah, I mean, we settled on one that was kind of a middle of the road, but mainly out of uh, look and convenience. Cause we felt like one of the night, one of the things uh, to make people feel most comfortable is something that might look like a normal toilet <laughs> as an example. Right. <laughs> yep. So we tried to, we went that route is like something that looked, it felt normal by that. Um, so people would adjust to it a little bit easier. I don't know if that was, if it worked or not, but it seems like it has, you know, I mean, I think, you know, that was the approach that we took with it. Um, so, and then, oh, and then with like the goal zero concept, this, uh, I would do differently. Okay. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So Renogy is a great, as a, as another solar company that offers like really basic solar setups and stuff. We bought the goal zero for the portability component of it. It really has served its purpose uh, and continues to serve its Mm -hmm. purpose uh, throughout the build when we need power up here Mm -hmm. uh, for charging things. And I could, you know, get it on the go. I didn't have a solar setup before the cabin. Right. So like I needed something to, to get me through this whole thing was built with like battery powered tools. Yep. Um, and so at, from that standpoint, it has been a great, um, electrical producer, if you will, but it's limited, you know, it is limited, but in a way we also didn't mind that because it's like, you're not running televisions off of this. We're not, you know, it's, it's really low electrical need components, you know, the laptop, you can charge your cell phone and so forth, things like that. LED lighting, we run off of it. Um, it does a fairly good job. Um, but we would, we would do a Renogy kit in the future okay. we would because of the investment cost for what that is and what it offers. And for people that don't know what you have is a portable generator. Like that's, that's the system what, of what the goal zero is, which is you can, it's almost like a, a brick, not as, uh, it doesn't weigh as much, but you can plug a, a solar panel right into it. Yep. It'll store the energy and it'll mm-hmm. convert it back to DC and AC for you. Yeah. Um, they're very portable. They even come with handles. You can move them around, but they're not a full solar setup, such as something that, you know, is part of the structure, you know? Which I think, thinking about the other type of system is um, when you're turning over an mm-hmm. Airbnb yeah. multiple times. Um, sometimes there's not enough time to charge, um, the goal zero, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, so we ended up having to buy two, two, Mm -hmm. so we could swap one out, you know? Um, but I think it's just not as convenient as we're getting busier, you Mm -hmm. know? Right. Yeah. Now that the cabin is built and it was like, oh, if we had a, if we had a battery bank with a 400 watt solar system and it was just always charging or operational, like that would be easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I will say the nice thing with the goal zero setup is the fact that it's an integrated kit. So it comes with the inverter already built into it. Mm -hmm. Um, the batteries built into it, the charging ports for the various, you know, USB, USB C 12 volt, um, plus a standard one ten uh, three prong, three prong plug. Mm-hmm. Um, the, it's a, it's just there. You don't have to think about how to you, right out of the box, you out of the box. Storing. It's ready. Yeah. And you know, and I think that's one thing that probably intimidates some people, um, especially with solar specifically. I mean, I'll even admit that before I got into this, like thinking about setting up or developing a solar system that would generate enough power for a cabin was a daunting thing. Like, what do mm-hmm. I need? And what if I buy the wrong thing? Um, and in that process, this made the most sense for me in the beginning. And then now knowing and seeing what Renogy offers, it's like they put together really well curated kits mm-hmm. that would basically fit pretty much anybody's setup from 
the most basic to probably the most elaborate. So for the beginners out there, though, the goal zero costed you how much? And it seems as though it's working. Like uh, it, even yeah. though you can upgrade and you're choosing to upgrade, mm -hmm. it seems like it's it's doing its job. It is. And I don't know that we will upgrade this cabin. Honestly, I think we will probably continue to go stick with goal zero. I think moving in other builds, we will probably do the Renogy, mm -hmm. knowing what we know now. And the goal zero costed you how much? Um, 700 is the cost at the time of the 400, which they no longer offer. Now it's the 500X. And it's the same price. We just bought one of those. So there's mm -hmm. $700 a piece. So not terribly cheap. But when you figure out what you get for that... Um, we bought a solar panel, a hundred watt solar panel, which is like two fifty, and I bought it on a on a sale. If you look, in fact, we're going to be coming up on them. Probably they're going to have a Memorial Day sale. Mm -hmm. um, you can I mean, so I saved like two hundred and something dollars when I bought the initial setup. Mm -hmm. So I jumped on that because I knew I was going to need it, even though I bought it months and months before we actually were even building up here. Um, but you know, so under un, under a thousand dollars. So for under a thousand dollars, you have the entire solar setup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and what that does for us is it, like I said, it offers the plug in light. It's an led four four foot, like led strip or three foot led strip light that we use in the kitchen. Um, it powers that and it gives people an opportunity to charge their phones, their mm -hmm. laptops. Um, it'll run some other small electric. It's not going to run a hairdryer mm -hmm. or anything like that. They offer ones that are larger mm -hmm. um, and much more expensive that would do a whole lot more. I mean, they can run houses off of them, but we and didn't then, need that. And it keeps charged for about a weekend stay, wouldn't you say? Yeah. You get a weekend yeah. out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then that's asking people to be, you know, mindful, mindful. of the use, right. yeah. know, which doesn't always work, but we, in fact, one of the most, fun guests that we've had yeah <laughs> they came up from the city and they had never been i mean i don't know if they've really spent that much time in nature at all and it was the heart of winter um they got a snowstorm they used that thing to like zero they okay. ran out of light yeah like they lit candles they popped <laughs> their wine bottles uh -huh. and i'm telling you they had the most fun that we think any guests have had here mm -hmm. in that 24 by candlelight, hour, by candlelight. <laughs> yeah I, I mean her and her friend they had a they did a photo shoot up here with another cool. uh, local photographer that, i mean they had a blast and it didn't phase them a bit yeah so, so so speaking of winter you've a lot of people are scared of winter a lot of people who are doing this business because you know you either know or you're going to learn very fast your pipes will freeze you know the, the things things can go awry so mm -hmm. you guys have chosen to stay open in the winter how's that experience been and you know how is it paying off for you uh, guys in terms of uh, occupancy rates and things of that nature we i think we were a little surprised but <laughs> um we were fully booked um all winter and I have to say, we were just open on the week. We had like long weekends, yeah. right? Um, we weren't open um, for an entire, you know, the full week. But yeah, we were, the we were week, open weekends, right? Mm -hmm. Monday through Monday through Thursday, we kind of had blocked out. Mm -hmm. Friday, you know, or you know, even I guess sometimes we did have Thursdays through like four day stays and stuff. But we were completely fully booked. You were fully booked all, all winter. winter, and people were coming up. I mean, we ended up with. What three over three feet of snow up here? Yeah, I mean, people were coming up. Um, we were recommending bring get snowshoes. Mm -hmm. They had a great time. Yeah, um, people come up here to cross country ski. There's really good trails for that. Um, yeah, humans are a lot just... more resilient than people think. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, I th and that's part of it. I think we we you know, and I'm guilty of this too. Is like the whole the technology attachment that we all seem to have. It's like, oh, you know, we're so frail if we don't have an outlet to plug into. Mm -hmm. But when you realize, like, what happens is when that stuff gets taken away, people will find a way to entertain and experience whatever it is that they're in mm -hmm. and, and they survive it, yeah. you know, with success and they yeah. enjoy it. But I think there's like this cabin has sort of this coziness to it. And Definitely. I think people were really attracted to that. I mean, being able to build a fire. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, the, and the we wood even stove had people, here. yeah. I mean the wood stove, um, but being able to look out and see the snowfall and we had people who are making campfires in the winter too oh, and yeah. having, you know, winter, which, we love to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and did you guys change your uh, pricing over the winter months? Well, we started. So our first um, season was starting October 2020. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we were in the midst of the pandemic. 
I think people were ready to like just do a little something and be away from whatever it was that they were around. Um, this was a good place to socially distance. And it was right. So it gave somebody an, uh, an opportunity to do that and feel safe about mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when we started in October, we just set a price that we thought was comparable to what we felt was worth going to be worth our time mm-hmm. to, cause we're, we manage this ourselves. We do all the cleaning, the turnover and all that. And, Honestly, we didn't quite know how much work it was going to be. It, it's turned. I mean, it is. It's a fair amount of work to yep. do it yourself. I mean, yep. it definitely is. You you learn how much more time it's going to take than you initially think it's going to take. And mm-hmm. balancing that with your day to day to day job and is, life yeah. is still something that we're trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we did not adjust the rate. We started at a rate and we kept at that rate and. It was, like I said, we booked up so quick. Our heads were spinning. We were mm-hmm. like, we literally just put this online. I think in, in four days, October was full. full. Yep. <laughs> um, it wasn't long after November was full. And we right. were like, oh my goodness. You know? yeah. And then December and January and we February. I mean, it was right up through. Um, and we saw no need to make any. I mean, I think one could argue like, oh, maybe we could have raised the rate. Our yeah. goal was not necessarily to try to completely maximize um the revenue off the bat i think it was more about like getting exposure yeah. getting the exposure getting people mm-hmm. up here that was our primary thing and and honestly with the fact that it booked up so quick um we didn't really have much time to to try to worry about adjusting price mm-hmm. it was just like boom it was full and we're like okay well <laughs> right good to know so let's, know? let's chat about that a little bit more you guys just starting off you know the, the cabin is built you're putting it out into the world um, what are you expecting? What happens? How are you feeling? And also, how did you market it? You know, it's a lot of people's dreams of, you know, making a dollar for yourself. You know, a uh, dollar made uh, on your own is worth four to ten dollars made, you know, on someone else's system that's given to you, you know, at a day to day job. So, you know, you guys have your own thing here. You know, you, you, you fully own this. And so just kind of run me through that. You know, how did you guys start? Like when you, when you just listed it on Airbnb, how did things go? Like, you know, and, 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 you know, kind of think about it from someone who is thinking about starting or is going to start or, you know, will be starting in the future or is a little scared. So, yeah. So when we, I mean, obviously when we approached it, we knew we were going to go straight to Airbnb with it. Um, It was, I think the biggest thing was making sure we had, we felt like we had all of our bases covered the right pictures to kind of convey everything. So like nothing was left to the imagination, Mm -hmm. making sure our descriptions were, um, very comprehensive and, and telling of people like, you know, what you're coming into. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say we, you know, you come into it with a, a certain mindset or, um, knowledge base that you think, you know, how it's going to go or what, is going to come of there who you're going to attract it's not that at all like okay. you just you have no control over what airbnb is a big platform and it brings people from all walks of life yeah and so you so that was probably i think some interesting things to me because we were we were capturing young and old um you know people that love the outdoors and do it often to people that probably have rarely ever done it you know mm-hmm. this might have been their first experience in a in a tiny house or a cabin like this ever uh, but, certainly running a wood stove, they've never done it. But if you're talking about marketing, well, we really, we didn't do a whole lot of marketing other. I mean, we have an Instagram page, mm-hmm. um, we have a Facebook page and you know, we have our, we have a website and an, you know, the Airbnb, but, um, so that, you're saying there you're, wasn't a whole lot. Yeah. Of, we didn't advertise. Really. No. I mean, not in like a traditional sense right. at all. We just didn't have a budget for it. It was <laughs> like all, you know, we built this thing. It was like, all right, now, and we were late getting to the game. We wanted this rented in the summer. Right. And we didn't, we were months behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so our, I mean, our marketing strategy was literally just put it out, get it out it, there, put yeah. it out there and see. And what was funny too, is we thought we were like, oh, we want to, we want to do some like beta testing with it, like get some friends and low, right. you know, come up and use this space for a week and give us feedback. Yep. So we know how to fine tune this before like our guests start coming. Mm-hmm. 
we didn't even have time for that because like, the booking started it booking yeah it happened so quickly we we're like okay i guess this is just what's gonna happen like yeah um we're gonna run it on the fly <laughs> and hopefully get people give us like good positive feedback mm-hmm. and like you know critic you know, come in and tell us like hey um yeah it would be nice if you had this because we want to you know we did want to curate this to the broadest audience possible i guess you know but make sure we covered the things that maybe we weren't thinking about because we we knew what we wanted right. but that doesn't necessarily right. apply to everybody um well I, I would airbnb is a great uh platform for that reason um it's it's an amazing marketplace that you can instantly tap into but i i have to say i think you're being a bit coy this is an amazing cabin so if you had to think of you know what about this space is probably drawing in the most people uh, just because you know as when you're looking at an Airbnb you you're looking at four or five all at once you mm-hmm. know and so what is it a, do you think about this cabin and Camp Hervé uh, on its own do you think it is drawing people in I think I think initially I think it might be what they see. I mean, the, the yeah. photographs first, mm-hmm. right? I mean, just sort of the aesthetic of it, mm-hmm. you know, it's this, um, it's very tall and it has yeah. the observation deck. I mean, I just think it's, um, unique, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we did try to, you know, we built it in a way that we were hoping to, you know, have that, the, the sexy photos or whatever that would attract people to see it. And they're like, Oh, that looks interesting. You mm-hmm. know? Um, I think when people see those pictures and what it, 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 I guess it paints a picture in their mind of like what the The space, what the experience could be. Mm -hmm. And that is something, you know, touching back to what we were, we talked about a little bit earlier about what else was around here to like, there just wasn't another space that was offering the kind Mm -hmm. of setup that we have. Um, And we think, I think that's what's drawing people into it. But we did have a photographer come and mm-hmm. photograph. Photograph I mean, it well, init- yeah. Initially, it, they were my photos, and then we had a pho- uh, photographer come in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that makes a difference. It helped. I, I mean, mean, it I think definitely that helps absolutely. draw people in. Yeah, um, and we got it at like a great time of the year, right? Um, and you know, we want to build on that too because obviously, it doesn't always look like fall <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. so you know we there's there's other times of the year that we want to get some photography you know and it's lushness but we missed that in 2020 because we weren't done yeah you know? so we right. had to unfortunately we were done by fall yeah um but i do i think that's probably what people see and when you know talking about looking at four or five properties at a time I, you know we don't know who doesn't choose us of course right you're mm-hmm. only you're only right. getting the people that book with you um, we know we got a lot of views. Okay. We got a lot of views. And you can see that, right? Daily. Yeah. I mean, there's it's in the thousand. There's like a thousand, <laughs> at least a thousand a day yeah. or something like that. I mean, it's, it's a, lot, it's a of lot, lot of views. Yeah, you guys have to hold off <laughs> on allowing people to book for today so we can jump in and, and get this done. Yeah. And what's interesting, oops, sorry. It, what's interesting is that you you don't know what extra demand is there. That's the other thing. So like we have this one cabin and I will say like, I think... You mentioned like being coy or like m- there's a little bit of modesty. Like we look at this and we're like, are other people going to love it? Do you mm-hmm. think, is it cool? Like, is it as cool <laughs> as we thought? Like, or is it not as cool? Or we don't know. But at the same time, like when you only have one space to book out and it gets booked for a weekend, we don't know if there's 20 other people that wanted that to book that same. Yeah. You know, we don't. Right. So there's this, there is still this unknown about mm-hmm. like what growth potential we have here. Yeah. Um, which we're and we're going to approach it in a calculated and a slow way. We don't want to just go at it with you know a full on build out and find out that that demand isn't yeah. there because we're sitting on five acres of land. There's a lot of different things that can be done here, yeah. and people still won't feel as though they're on top of each other. They'll still have the seclusion, mm-hmm. um, but there's a lot more to. So you know, do you feel as though you're leaving money out on the table, seeing all that? Well, I think we do now. Like yeah. that's that's part of it. like I think as we got through that first you know winter season, we were like, we need to get going. You know, like uh-huh. we need to add to this because I think I think there's other opportunities to to capitalize on in terms of unique stays um, that we think would draw people up here and still keep the intimacy level that we want to maintain, which is you know so nobody's on top of each other. You're not going to really see another structure from any other structure Mm -hmm. that's our goal we do have ideas and plans for that and i think 
what's really kind of keeping us at maybe the slower pace is just time. Mm-hmm. Time. You know, mm-hmm. at this point, we both are working our full time jobs. You're running this And we're business. running this. And, um, you know, to expand, we're going to need to bring in some help, I think. Yeah. Um, right. And thinking about with- how to fit in a build while you're also renting. Right. property you know we don't want to disturb people that are already rented mm-hmm. and we're obviously not we don't want to cancel bookings so we can mm-hmm. you know so there is this it's there's a needle that needs to be strategic yeah, i think yeah. with the the timing yeah so, so let, maybe let's take a step back and chat about the build um talk to me about the build process here and also the question on everyone's mind is you know how much did this set you back and you know kind of how did you go about it so the biggest setback is it beyond financial it was time I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, this it was a year's worth of work, weekends, nights, and I mean, any free time we had. And you guys built it yourself. We you built, didn't bring in anybody. We built it ourselves. We had some friends on occasion. My father helped uh, on occasion, and my cut, you know, some family members and so forth. But we were we were up here swinging the hammers mm-hmm. and and you know burning the siding and painting the doors and building. You know, we did everything, um, and. And we put our we put our own cash into it. We didn't finance anything, so right. we had a we had a budget that we knew we were trying to keep to. Uh, initially, I think we went in thinking we would spend like fifteen thousand dollars on a build. Very modest. Uh, That's what we all hope for. Right. Yeah, right. very. And I think at some point through, I was like, "Well, this is probably gonna be like twenty. Maybe we'll go to twenty. And then it became twenty five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's where we we figured out it was like pretty close to where we landed. You know, within mm-hmm. a, a degree of of that. Um, and, and he, like you were keeping, he was kind of keeping a mental track of like mm-hmm. yeah, I how just, everything, <laughs> you know, what the costs were. And I actually went through and the I, receipts. I went through all the receipts and itemized everything. And I was <laughs> like, wow, you are right on. I mean, yeah, yeah. he hit it right on the nail. We, mm-hmm. and she, it was funny too. Cause she was like, how do you, I was like, well, every time I go to make a purchase, cause it was me, I'm just running this calculating log in my head. Note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and being in the architectural field for, you know, 20 years as a project manager, like you, you learn that yeah. anyway, like yeah. you learn how to like organize things in your mind in a way of like keeping track of how things are progressing. And so I just, I, I mean, I applied the same thing here and you know, you know, you, any kind of a build project usually goes over budget because there's things that you're not thinking about Absolutely. or right. as you progress through, you change your mind and you overspend in mm-hmm. another area. Um, and it makes sense to do that in a lot of, in a lot of cases. Um, and we weren't upset about the fact that we, what we ended up no. spending, we still felt like it, it was worth that. You yeah. know, we, we were glad to have done it. Now, had we hired it out, I out, think it would yeah. have doubled. probably doubled. That, doubled. that That's my next question so for all that, those out there without a hunky architecture architect <laughs> husband. Uh, you know, what advice yeah. would you give to them as they're trying to fund their builds and think about what's the, the smartest use of their capital? So I think there's two ways to look at it. One is um, time. So you hire people out, right? You hire people to come in and and build for you. Um, It's going to get done quicker. You have more, you know, people on hand. It's, it's going to be completed quicker, which means you can get it on the market and rent it quicker, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So I think that's one way to look at it. Right. And you're going to cost, it'll cost you more, more, but you'll be up and running and you'll way you know be trying to recoup that cost. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we took the sweat equity route, I guess, mm-hmm. and and did it all ourselves. And you know, so it took a lot longer, obviously, but um, the return, yeah, actually, it's yeah, it's like it's less to make back in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, it took us longer, but that pro the time that it took wasn't so bad you know in the sense that like having it being kind of a full calendar year we didn't spend a full calendar year building we actually took three months off due to a small um i don't know what you'd call it kind of a confusion of boundary or what you know we we had to we had to get some logistical things figured out Mm -hmm. and that so we sat tight on this for three months so really our build time was nine months of building and Mm -hmm. and then 
you know, again, three or four, that was winter. Mm-hmm. So that, Moving a little slower. you know, yeah. and I say, even though winter's like five months up here, six months up here, but you can still build in the shoulder seasons pretty easily, right. you know, in the heart of it, like, you know, you get into December, February and stuff like that, January, it, you just, I had little desire to get up here and do a lot. Um, so we just took that time off, but if you time it right and you, so yeah, the other side of it, I guess, is she, you know, she mentioned hiring it out. The other side of it is doing it yourself. If I, if you don't have that experience, I, I still, I would still recommend trying to do as much of it yourself as you can, just from the investment. Number one, you're going to learn so much to doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to save yourself a month from some money doing it. It gives you an excuse to buy some tools, learn some new skills. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always, I mean, I, that's a great excuse personally. I, you know, um, but also tapping into family and friends that may have some of that experience that you don't have. And actually you'll, you'll surprise yourself too of what it is that you can accomplish even by watching YouTube videos. I mean, honestly, yep. that's <laughs> like, it's a huge thing. I mean, you know, I grew up watching, you know, this old house and things like that, you know, and again, always being interested in the architectural field and building and woodworking and all this. So I, mm-hmm. I you know, I might be unique in that way, but I mean, YouTube is such a resource. I mean, you can go out there and search anything and you'll find a video in seconds yeah. and probably mm-hmm. 10, a hundred, I don't, you know, to do it at different ways and you'll just go try it, yeah. you know, try it, put your hands on it. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, uh, happiness that comes from that. I mean, you, mm-hmm. it, there's a reward. Reward mm-hmm. is what you, you know, when you see it done, you're like, wow, I did that. Yeah. Um, and that means some, that's, that's worth a lot. I think, um, plus having the intimacy of knowing how things went together, if there's ever problems and how to fix them yourself, because that's another thing there's ongoing maintenance, yeah. you know? So at some point you better just learn it Yeah. or you're going to constantly be hiring. And that's a, com- that's a fine way to go about it too. If you have the resources to, to do that. Um, and we do to some extent, but at the same time, we also see the benefit in doing it ourselves. It just, it, we enjoy it. We, yeah. It gives us an excuse to come up here and mow the lawn and, <laughs> and, you know, spend that time. Uh, we could hire somebody to come and do it every week, but yeah. we like to, we like to be able to get up here and do that stuff too. So, so you know. as you guys run this business on your own, can you talk to me about, you know, some of the guests that you've had and kind of what you've learned from them and also what you've learned, you know, over your time that you didn't know? We've only had one bad guest. Okay. Let's start there. <laughs> so okay. that, and that, so we feel really lucky because that's yeah. something you don't know. Like you don't know if people are going to come in and respect your space or not. You hope that they will. Um, be, and it's, again, after you've put in all your hard efforts and money, mm-hmm. you want people to come in and appreciate it and respect it, but you don't have control of it. That's not like a parameter you can put in Airbnb. Right. Um, so we've been fortunate. We've we've had one kind of bad experience that was handled very easily through mm-hmm. Airbnb, and it was over and done with, and and not much to dwell on. It was just like, okay, that happens. Um, and but beyond that, what we've been surprised with is um, how uh, receptive all the guests have been. I guess to like what we are offering or what we aren't offering, Mm -hmm. you know, they're not, they're not coming in or going away from it saying, Oh, geez, you know, it would have been nice if you guys had this or we had, you know, we'd have no curtains on our windows. And that was actually something we wondered if people would really, you know, cause that's a different way to live. Like Mm -hmm. people are used to pulling a blind and, but we're up here, you're in the nature. There's not, you know, for ourselves, we felt like, I I think I've, I've been used to living in houses without blinds, Mm -hmm. you know, um, so it was something that I wanted natural light and we, and we thought, oh, people are going to, we have one person, you know, make comments about like, oh, it'd be nice over window coverings. But ultimately what I think surprised us is how, how very little, like, I mean, more positive feedback than negative, but mm-hmm. just how receptive people have been to like what it was that we've put together, which I guess is in some way validating that we've covered the basis mm-hmm. but even though we were really approaching it for ourselves it was like what would we like right um i mean there so, are things where um i think we came to this with sort of that mindset of conservation like be mindful of using your energy be mindful of using the wood be mindful of using how much water and you know those kinds of things so there have been times where 
it seems like there is an excess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are just <laughs> of, on vacation. Of these resources and, being used, yeah. um, you know, but. And some of that's our fault too, right? We yeah. feel like we probably need to do more signage and mm -hmm. and requesting of like, hey, be mindful of this. Like keeping, you know, we, you only have, you know, there's a 200 gallon tank out back and, you know, in a day, they say like in a person's day-to-day -day use at home, it's like 120 to 150 gallons per person per day, right? That's Crazy. a lot of water. Yeah. Right. Well, we don't have a flushing toilet. So now you're just saving, you know, you're saving money there. But like we, sh you should probably get by by like, when we, in fact, in the wintertime, when we have that shut down and we're providing water on site, we give like five gallons for the weekend for like hand washing and dishes and so mm -hmm. forth. And then we tell people, we give you a gallon of drinking water, bring additional if you feel like you're going to need it. Nobody's ever had like, so we know that they can conserve. Right, right. We know right. They can conserve. In the winter. <laughs> yeah. But when you give, so that, and that's one thing I'll say is like, well, I guess when you give them that little bit of extra, like they will take it. And like, mm -hmm. you know, so one of our things was like, you know, mindful of your waste. Um, you know, water consumption, the lighting consumption, all these things. It isn't necessarily that we like, you know, oh, you know, shame on you for mm -hmm. doing that. It's like, you know, because we understand like people are up here to enjoy it and we right. want them to enjoy it the way that is going to, that fits their way of enjoying it. You know, if it means that they need to take a, you know, longer shower and, it, you know, burns through some water and so forth. Oh, we don't want, you know, but at the same time, our hope was like people would, um, approach it in the same way that we were going to approach it. Mm -hmm. And that's not, you know, like I said, yeah, you don't, you just don't case. have that control. We, right. Again, you don't want to limit that. Yeah. Um, but, but I think we need to plan better <laughs> for it. Yeah. So it, right. It's part of that learning curve. Right. Yeah. 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 And then speaking of a learning curve, can you let me know some of the things that you have learned uh, starting this business uh, and also some things that you've kind of failed at. I know that, you know, we were talking about uh, you guys were providing things that you're no longer providing just because you're realizing, you know, just from a pure business standpoint, you know, there's, you know, the law of diminishing returns and it just wasn't making sense. Can you guys chat about some of those ideas and thoughts that you've learned along the way? Yeah. What do you, you want to? So initially we um, like one of the things was we, you know, creating this experience this this uh you know getaway relaxing thing one of the first things that we started to offer when when people were booking was um a local cider hard cider that uh we thought was kind of a nice touch to the area mm -hmm. it introduces them to what's out here and mm -hmm. and we found pretty and it's something we enjoy <laughs> and it's yeah exactly right so yeah. it's, it's something we enjoy we it's something that we see as like a really um uh, like it's a huge draw to this location. Like, Absolutely. and if people don't already know about it, like we felt like they should, and like mm -hmm. go and see this. So we were offering um, a bottle of cider, you know, with every booking and so forth. And not, it was interesting because not to say that they didn't all enjoy it because it was always empty. empty. <laughs> okay. when we came. So they definitely drank it and enjoyed it, but like very few people were like, "Oh, like this was," you know, like they never really commented about that. At, so we don't know if it was necessarily. Um, something that was going to detract if we didn't do it mm -hmm. or if it was this additive thing that like oh because we did it that was so much better and we're like and it gets ex you know it gets expensive to Absolutely. do that kind of stuff right. yeah and so we were like i guess if we weren't getting a sense of like this was uh, like an appreciation like was that something that right that would move the needle from a business ex standpoint or, right. or are we just spending our own spending money on, right that's <laughs> it and and you know as you start as you start to operate this as a business thing and that's the other thing that's i guess the other side of it is the you know, you put so much of yourself into you, you, you're, you're a part of this building. We are like, we, we spent so much time and money into it. We had to learn to pull ourselves away, separate us from that. Knowing like, you know, I was so worried about these floors, floors. when I put yep. them in. I was like, <laughs> you know, it came up and they're muddy and they're, you know, I was like, no, like you got, you know, we got a, mo there's a mot, like yeah, my house. Right. Yeah. It was like, yeah. we were, you know, we were looking at it that way. And actually that's funny that Spilled you say that. Cause one of the, and... I did make this comment one day cause it was the bad guess that we had, like the place was a mess. It was a wreck <laughs> mud everywhere. And I said, well, would you walk through your own house like that? Like, yeah. you know, that's all we ask is for some common courtesy. And you know, that's again, that was us like just being so attached to right. the build and not to say that we still aren't, we do not want people to like ruin this stuff. <laughs> But you heard it first. Come here, yeah, trash yeah, the place. Yeah, they're, not, all, yeah. they're cool with it. <laughs> not really. But it was like, you know, we had to learn to separate us, separate it from a, 
that kind of a, a emotional attachment mm-hmm. to like this is a business right. things are going to happen right. things are going to get damaged like jen just spent this spring we repainted the whole inside because over the winter months uh just you know with the wood stove mm-hmm. you'll get the soot over yeah. the the, mm-hmm. the course of the year the season being burned and we were like well we'll try to clean the walls it didn't it's work. Just, it's, way, it's way faster. Yeah. Just repaint it. You know? I repainted yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so these are the things, you know, that's some of the things that we did learn is like, there's probably going to be way more maintenance than you initially think. Mm-hmm. Um, things are going to get dirty. Things are going to get dirty. <laughs> things are going to get broken. Yeah. Um, and, you know, not everybody's going to use it in the way that your mind mm-hmm. has yeah. that out there. You know, like it. it well, and I think initially um, we... You know, we spent a lot of money on like lighting. Oh man! I yeah. mean, and that was a big mistake. Yeah, it, it was broken. When, you, when at- you say you spent a lot of money, like around how much? So <laughs> we bought. So I bought some uh, lamps. Hundred, they're like one hundred and sixty, one hundred eighty dollars a piece. I bought a couple of those. They were broken in like the first <laughs> two weeks. Like, yeah, I was just like, I was. And I'm like a, because in the architecture world, like I'm a big lighting guy. Like I love good lighting and interesting <laughs> and cool lighting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, this was a bad idea. Right. Like, I didn't know that they would be so fragile. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we, like, the lights behind us, which are pretty, uh, they're a nice kind of ambiance yeah. light mm-hmm. for yeah. the bedside and stuff. They were a little bit cheaper, but still not, to, they're over $100 a piece, each of yeah. those. Um, what else did we, there was some other thing. Oh, well, the speaker, I have this Bluetooth speaker that's like, you know, we we spent some money to, like, elevate yeah. the we experience. Wanted the ex- yeah, right. But hoping too that like that stuff was going to be, you know, handled with care. And so far, fortunately, most of it has. Like I said, right. other than those lights, yeah. like that was a. But that was again with that learning curve. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We we. They learned. were glass. I mean, that was like in my mind, it was like, oh, they're just going to sit someplace and they're going to be safe. No, no, because right. I'm transport. No. In fact, I'm guilty. I'm one. I broke one of them <laughs> myself. <laughs> And with a bottle of cider, actually, that hit it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> wow. So, you know, funny, right? And then the other one, it was like within the first week or two, one of the guests, um, you know, had an accident, broke it, mm-hmm. was, you know, to no fault of their own. They covered the expense of it and stuff. And that's the other thing you have to navigate, too, is that when that stuff happens is how how will you handle it? I think most of the time you're going to find that guests are willing to make right on their mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, but that's through those episodes like we learn okay we need durable things mm-hmm. things that aren't gonna you know people can grab it if they drop it it's not gonna be you know we do worry about the goal zeros at times because they can't get wet yeah um, and if somebody took it outside and left it accidentally like you know we'd have to charge for the the repair or the replacement and you know the nice thing with airbnb is they have things in place to help protect you as a host um mm-hmm. against uh things like that um so you're not necessarily going to have to eat those kind of things at the same time you don't want to see it happen absolutely mm-hmm. but so you just start to learn like where you know durable products are necessary and you might need to kind of like tone down some of the but it all again it depends on what you're trying to curate like what is the experience you're creating go to that level but just know you're gonna change it along yeah. the way. you <laughs> know you're gonna swap out some stuff yeah. You know, yeah, and uh, as a, a married, happily married couple, you know, in business together, can you guys talk to me about how you guys kind of navigate that? Do you do you, do does one person handle one thing, another person handles another? Do, does everyone kind of like you know just kind of know what they're best at, or you know, do you have the hardship <laughs> of like, hey, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it either? Can you talk well, to? Well, oh boy, about it? <laughs> this just came up yesterday. We're yes, keeping it, it as kosher as possible. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, we definitely have our roles. Like we know what each of us is better at. Mm-hmm. Um, Jen, <laughs> Jen, I will say, can be guilty of her end of uh, slipping a little bit here and there. Um, so there's yeah, there's two. <laughs> I tend to be a little bit of a procrastinator. Okay, and he is not. All right. Um, and my current job is um, a bit more time demanding Mm -hmm. i would say um so for me finding the balance Mm -hmm. um has been a little more difficult time demanding Mm -hmm. in the sense that when she leaves work work does not leave her mind yeah so that's the one thing right because she you know even though we're home at the same time her mind is still focused on that work which sometimes 
consumes the space yeah. and puts the other things off. Where when I leave work, I leave work and my mind, I, I'm geared into something else. So that's, and that's a luxury that I have that mm-hmm. she doesn't have. Yeah. And, you know, but we're, we know, we know what each person is going to be better at being able to handle. So for instance, I'm the one who comes up and does the cleaning. Like mm-hmm. I do the turnover. We found, we tried this together. It was like, <laughs> go outside. Like yeah. somebody goes inside, somebody goes like this. One chef in the kitchen. It's just, yeah, yeah, because it was way years. Like we're working over each other. It was like, I'm trying to do this and you're trying to do that. Like, don't make the bed when I'm doing this. It was like, this is just easier. To I like, would rather prep anything outdoors. outdoors. Okay. So, so I'm, I'll stack wood. I'll take care of the trash. I'll, you know, do the setup outside. Mm-hmm. And then he'll take care of the inside. So yeah. we know that part. Like yeah. Having two people in one small space trying to kind of maneuver and do the same thing, it it was not working. Yeah, it was inefficient. It was actually taking longer. I was right. like, man, I do this faster when I'm by myself, you know. So we learned quickly. And I come in here and I'm kind of like. She doesn't know where to go. Got, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got like a routine and a system down. And I come in and I'm I'm a bit like kind and of fumbling. Of, like I'm not well, sure where to start. And what's so funny. I say, oh, let me just take care of the outdoor stuff. Yeah, she's and, like, <laughs> she'll stack the wood and like take, yeah. like she said, take out the trash. And I like I just kind of cue things up at the door. And I was right. like, you handle this and right. and then I know when it comes back to me empty, it's done and I can bring it back in. Gotcha. Yeah. But like system now. Yeah. I it's, you know, I used to detail cars when I was in like right out of high school. So I still have this like me- methodology of like kind of front to back, top to bottom gotcha. thing as I work my yeah. way out. Mm-hmm. And I still, so when I come in, I'm already like assessed everything. And she's like, she's like, what do I do for, yeah. you know, I'm mm-hmm. like, no, 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 boom, I'm doing this. <laughs> um, so, and that's been pretty good. And I will say like the biggest, uh, believe it or not, the hardest thing I think for us is the, is the linens. Yes. Uh huh. Having this being an off grid setup without facilities on site, we transport all this stuff back and forth between here and our, main residence in bins. where in bins where we handle all of this everything gets washed between every state and we yep. have multiple sets of everything yep. but you still have to stay on top of it mm-hmm. and that is i mean you won't you just like oh it's just another load it's not it's like three loads of laundry every mm-hmm. time because it's the quilt it's the blanket it's the sheets and then the, you know then we we have the pillows and the cover and we you know we we disinfect all because especially with the COVID extra precautions had to be taken place. That has been one of the largest time consuming things. And then where to store that at the house, Mm -hmm. you know, without having all the clutter. And so there's just, that's something we're still trying to refine into yeah. a, like a nailed down system where it just feels like clockwork. It's not there yet. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, after four or five right. months of doing this, like mm-hmm. it's still like we just, I think what it is, it comes down to is like, we just need more of everything so that we don't feel so rushed about it but yeah. and do you um, guys accept a same day turnover or does there have to be a day gap we do a we day do. gap yep because right now us doing it ourselves it's too it's just way too hard and mm-hmm. initially we didn't know about that yep setting and we did get a couple of instances where we had to do the same day turn and that was like, you have a four three hour gap between man, one guest to the next i'm taking work off to come up and do this and it was so frazzled we're like i'm like what we can't do it like that this. first mm-hmm. month was, was really so stressful hard. um so we we leave a day in between that gives us a chance to come up and do it at a calmer pace and what rain or shine doesn't matter you know cold mm-hmm. winter doesn't matter we, i come up to do it um but i do need that like 24 hour period uh, to make it more manageable for us mm-hmm. cool. moving so. forward though and if we build up you know if we build out yep. that's that's the one thing um, we're gonna hire it out we need to have mm-hmm. find help and that's where i feel kind of lost like how do we find yeah we still don't yeah right we still don't feel like we have a good path on where to source somebody to come and do what we need because this is a different thing to it's clean and unique, you're dealing right you know it's one thing to clean toilets. It's another thing, you know, you're asking somebody to come and empty the compost and toilet and then re, you know, kind of reset that with every, which is, I mean, that stuff's, it's fairly easy, but it's something that not everybody's used to doing. Yeah. It's a unique Comfortable, request. right? Mm-hmm. So, um, we need to. And changing out the linens and those sorts of things when we don't really have a lot of storage here. It's not like we have extra sets on site, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. it's a lot of bringing things back and forth. And how to manage that? Like, do we have them come to our house first and pick up the new stuff and then drive up here and do their thing, then bring it back to our house? Do they just hold everything with, you know? Yeah. So So. it's, and maybe it's part of it just like, we don't know. We've not really like engaged on that level to find out what 
would work Work for somebody, which we probably just need to do, but we're just so like, we're so into this that we haven't really reached out. But, um, that's, that's probably one of the first things that we want to change is to hire it, you know, get somebody to do it for you. Cause even if it takes a cut into your revenue, man, I think it's worth it. I think it's really Mm -hmm. worth it. Um, Mm -hmm. just to, yeah, to have that time to focus on other things like Mm -hmm. building out more stuff or, What, you know, organizing, or marketing. Yeah. yeah, or I was going to say organizing your business to right. like, how do you expand it? How do you engage more people and, and get your right. you know image out there? Um, you know, podcasts, yeah, yeah for things sure. like you know what I'm saying, for like sure. or editing videos, all that you know, because that's it's a you know it's two uh, two and a half three hours every time mm-hmm. at well, least, and multiple trips up. Right. Well, I will say it's an amazing <clears throat> problem to have that your your cabin is booked out. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. So right, it could be worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, just, just being mindful of time. I know, uh, we, we, you know, uh, you have things that you have to grab, you know, get to, um, I would just say, uh, you know, just finally, can you like leave us with some words of wisdom? And I ask this separately of each of you, um, you know, what advice would you give to someone that's a beginner at this? Um, and then, you know, at, at various steps, whether they are just getting into it, whether they own some land and they're thinking of something to build, just whatever was the biggest aha moment for you throughout this journey go first take take the risk yeah yeah absolutely um i think um he's more he's more inclined to take a risk Mm -hmm. and i've always been the one who's like let's think about the budget let's you know let's let's plan let's do this and that and um i think we've missed out on some opportunities And, um, I don't like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think I've learned that you just need to take the risk. Yeah. You have to just go for it. Got to go for it. And that's funny because the first thing that came to my mind was like, just do it. Like, yeah, try it. Um, and she's right because we've, and and it's not too late. Like this, the market is so plentiful for Mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, but I will say like, no budget is probably too small. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly no budget too big. It's all about like kind of curating it to what, what it is, you know, into an individual's perspective of what is ideal for them or where they see it. But, you know, obviously calculating the economics of it, making sure like it will generate money if that's your end goal. Mm-hmm. Um, but just like go for it and learn and the information's out there. Don't be afraid. I mean, it can be daunting when you'd feel like you don't know what you don't know, but I promise you it's like, as you start to try it and put things into motion, things will fall, things fall into place in a, in a, in a way that you might not know upfront, but it mm-hmm. will. And I mean, you, I have you seen think having conversations with people is a big one I, to some it's, extent, but I yeah. will say too, don't be swayed by somebody that tells you it's a bad idea. I mean, oh, look, that's true. when, <laughs> yeah, we've, you know, <laughs> I stopped talking that. to people about things cause I'm just like, I can't, I'm not taking, and that's the one thing is I don't listen to a lot of other people's opinions about things. Like if I feel confident about something, I'm going to go for, I'll learn it on my own. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going to learn it through something that you're telling me that where, you know, not, you know, less about it than I do. And yep. you're trying to tell me that this is a bad idea. It was like, no, like <laughs> I'll, I'll learn this on my own or I'll show you differently like, yep. what yeah. this actually is. But I'll, but you know, so you got to be cautious about that. I will say it, it helps to like get people who are encouraging, I would say, but don't feel if all you can do is something really small, don't be shy. Don't be shy about it. Mm-hmm. Like try it. Cause I'm telling you, people will sleep in like yeah. the simplest of things. I yeah. mean, they really will. They're just looking for a unique, if, if this is what the goal is, you know, is to create, create unique a unique experiences. experience. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunity out there and it would amaze you. Um, I mean, I bet in the wintertime, if you built an igloo out of snow, <laughs> yep. people would come and pay and sleep in that thing. I think they would like, I mean, you need the snow to do it, but, yeah. I, but honestly, I think that people would do it. And, and if you can only start small, right, it's only going to be, just build. start. It's your start. And mm-hmm. then that's where things start to build and kind of snowball, right? Yeah. You kind of build off of that and then you can keep going. And I guess the one last thing that I, w- I will want to mention, because I think it has been the most intimidating factor for us too, is the, like the finances side of things. Like mm-hmm. if you don't have a stockpile of cash or you feel like, oh man, I've only got a little bit of savings and I really, and you f- you're apprehensive about like, 
draining that or fully tapping into that, I would say try to find a way that you can finance something on a on a com- something that is comfortable for an individual because then that's different for everybody. To if that's what it's going to require to get you into it, don't shy away from that because I you if it's done right and it's done well, mm-hmm. the revenue should be there to help cover that expense. You know, mm-hmm. and I I say that without, you know, I'm not recommending financial advice. And I'm just saying yeah. like, that opportunity is there for somebody and that's the path that they need to take. I think that if it's done on a, on a responsible level, you can, you can get to where you need to be and find out that it was, it'll be successful, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that is one thing for us. I think initially too, is like, how do people go out and do all this? Like, where's all this money coming from? Um, yeah. And over our, I think over our process, like we have seen where and how pe- some people do it. And the fact of the matter is, is there are creative ways for you to make that money or get that money to do what you need to do, even if it is starting small or whatever, but just try it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Try yeah. it. There's and, some bell tents out there, only $3,000. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can get in at pretty low, even if... You build these little, uh, we saw one, there's a videos on YouTube about these, this, uh, kid, I think initially built this little A-frame cabin with a, like a plexiglass roof that props up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, Derek Deidre. It's like a $700 dealer. It's how it's, there's a, there's one video headline that's like, oh, I built this A-frame for 700 bucks or Mm -hmm. something. There's a woman in Florida that built one of these and it makes like. I, like twenty thousand dollars a year or something yeah. like that. So my, my point is, is like you can for under a grand. Yeah, I mean less than my goal zero setup. Right? Yeah, uh, you could have a structure that you could rent out for some fee that you know. So it's just, it's just trying it. You know, don't be afraid to to take the risk. Yeah, and 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 trying and learning things is it's it, or trying things is the best way to learn things. To, As you're in the process of it, you just start accumulating so much knowledge and information that you know your next move is better than your last. Absolutely. Yeah, and you and then as that happens, it's you start to prove to yourself. Some of your ideas are trusting your instincts and your 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 gut about like, oh, this feels right. You just you develop that. You it starts to hone in, and then the next thing you know, you have one under your belt, and then you know, yeah, two or three more planned, perhaps. Yeah, you know two or mean? three more so, plans on on five acres of beautiful land here yeah. in the Finger Lakes. Yeah. So go for it. Try. It. <laughs> <laughs> 